Hi guys, as you see here, today I'm going to talk about the cross section of the spinal cord. In my previous video, I showed you the spinal cord within the vertebral column. Now, if you take a cross section through the spinal cord, you can see this structure here. This is the cross section of the spinal cord. So the spinal cord is comprised of two parts. This butterfly shaped structure at the center, it is called the gray matter. So this is the gray matter, which is surrounded by this white color structure. It's called the white matter, white matter. So why this structure under the microscope is represented in gray, but it is surrounded by the white color. I'm going to show you a structure of the neuron. So neurons have this cell body like this. Within the cell body, we have the, ax, uh, the nucleus and some short processes coming out of the cell body. It is known as the dendrites. So these are called the dendrites. And here is the cell body. And the cell body gives off a long process it is called axon the axon is insulated by a fat or cup the lipid structure like structure is called the myelin why as you know the function of the neuron is that when the neuron is stimulated it will convey the action potential through the axon. If you want to convey the action potential through the axon quickly, you need to have an insulated axon with a myelin sheath. So it's called the myelin sheath in PNS. It is produced by the Schwann cells. So it looks like a wire, you know, wire has a plastic white plastic structure insulating the wire it is it looks like the myelin sheath so imagine that the gray matter contains lots of cell body so it does not have myelin sheath structure so that's why it's represented in gray but the white matter contains lots of myelin Oxen, myelin sheet oxons, oc myelinated oxons. So they're going up and coming down. So this is the structure of the spinal cord. What is the function of the spinal cord? Spinal cord, as you see here, it looks like a highway. So it's, it receives some information from the, uh, from the uh, peripheral system like skin, the muscles, joints, and sends up, it sends up the information to the brain. The processing will happen into the brain and then it responses to that information through the descending fibers or tracts. So we have some information coming from the outside, coming from the skin. So imagine that we have the skin here, so it receives information there and it will send up to the brain and then back there. So this is the gray matter. So gray matter, as you see here, it projects anteriorly. This projection is called the ventral or anterior horn. And these two projections are called the dorsal or posterior horn. I'm going to rub out these things. So this is the posterior horn or dorsal horn. Anterior horns, posterior horns. 
So imagine that here we have skin, some receptors stimulate by like touching pain temperature stimulates the nerves that are known as the sensory nerve. They are carrying the information from the skin to the spinal cord like this. So this red one is called the sensory neuron. It's carrying the information from the skin or from the joint to the spinal cord. So sensory neuron carrying this, the sensory information through this highway. It is called dorsal root because it faces dorsal means posterior it faces posteriorly so this bulge on the way of the dorsal root is called the dorsal root ganglion what do we have within the ganglion we have the cell body of the sensory neurons so it's a cell body of the sensory neuron and it has the peripheral and central processes it carries the sensory information from the skin or joint muscle tendons to the posterior or dorsal core then what will happen so it can go up passing through this white column go up it goes up to the brain and what will happen in the brain, as I mentioned, that the information will be processed there and then it responds to those information through the, this way. So we have some neurons within the ventral horn. They are called the motor neuron. So here we have the cell body of the motor neuron with dendrites. And then the axon exits the ventral horn and passing through this ventral root. And then it passes through the spinal nerves, get into the muscles. So here we have the muscles. So you see, this is the axon of the motor neuron. So the green one is the motor neuron. So motor neuron cell body is within the ventral horn. The axon coming axon coming out of the spinal cord and passing through the ventral root and then mixed together with the sensory. So this area that you can see the mixing of the sensory information and motor information is called the spinal nerves. So spinal nerves contains both sensory and motor. We have 31 pairs of spinal nerves. They contain both sensory and motor. Then spinal nerve immediately after exiting the vertebral column through the intervertebral foramen it splits into two rami. Rami is the plural word. Ramus is a singular word. Ramus means branch. It looks like two branches coming out of the spinal cord. So this is the dorsal ramus. Dorsal ramus. And this one is the ventral ramus. So just keep in mind, within the dorsal ramus and ventral ramus, we have both sensory and motor, like this. What does it mean? It means that the dorsal ramus, they're supplying the muscles and the skin at the back, and sensory and motor nerves within the ventral ramus, they're supplying the lateral, interior of the trunk, upper limb, and lower limb. So, as a whole, we have dorsal horn, 
vents of horn. Dorsal root, this is the dorsal root, ventral root, and then they mix together and make spinal larva, and the spinal larva splits into two rami, dorsal ramus and ventral ramus. Now I'm going to show you those structures on this model. So if you look at closely to this uh, cross section, here you can see this gray matter, which is surrounded by the white matter. As you see, here is the dorsal horn, and this is the ventral horn. And between these two, we have the intermediate zone. And here is called the dorsal root, which contains the sensory neurons. And here is the ventral root. They mix together and make spinal nerve. So on the way of the dorsal root, this bulge area is the dorsal root ganglion. So dorsal root ganglion in this model helps you to identify the dorsal surface and differentiate the dorsal surface of the spinal cord from the ventral surface because we don't have the ganglion here in the ventral part. We only have the ganglion on the dorsal root. So this is called the dorsal root ganglion. You can also see some rootlets. They are called rootlets. So rootlets, dorsal rootlets come together and make dorsal root. Ventral roots just come together and make a ventral root, and then roots come together and make spinal nerve. And yes, this is the only structure that I can show you on this model. And here is the anterior median sulcus or fissure. And posteriorly, we have posterior median sulcus. At the center, we have the central canal, which contains with this cerebrospinal fluid or CSF. Below, you can see. On this diagram, you can see the neurons within the spinal cord. So this is the ventral horn. Ventral horn, this black one, shows the motor neuron, the cell body of the motor neuron, and the axon exits the ventral horn, passing through the ventral root, and then passing through the spinal nerve. And this uh, green one, and also the yellow one, they are the sensory neuron. They are passing through the sensory, the sensory root or dorsal root. And you can also see the cell body of the sensory neurons within the dorsal root ganglion, and they are entering into the dorsal horn. How spinal, uh, spinal cord covers by the, these three layers of the meninges? The, from outer layer to inner layer, we have the dura mother, and the red one, the blue one is the dura mother, the red one is arachnoid mother, and this gray one is the pia mother. Pia, ma pia mother means faithful mother, like a faithful mother, it adheres the spinal cord. And just underneath the arachnoid mother, we have a space, this dark or black one is this subarachnoid space, sub means underneath, it contains the CSF. And outside the dura mother, we have a space called epidural space, which is filled with the fat. It is represented in yellow, and it contains some, some, some veins, internal vertebral venous plexus, you can see here. So, the last point that I'm going to show you is that the pia mother extends laterally. If you look at closely, you can see that the pia mother extends laterally, and it makes these structures. They are called denticulate ligaments. These triangular-shaped structures. It looks like a shark teeth. They are the lateral extension of the pia mother. They extend laterally and at anchoring the spinal cord to the ventral canal. So it provides the sp stability of the spinal cord within the vertebral canal. So when you are moving your vertebral canal, it provides the stability. The other thing that I'm gonna show you is that this is the conus medullaris I showed you before. So the pia mother extends down and make a line which is anchoring the spinal cord to the coccyx. This is called the phylum terminale. This line in the midline is called phylum terminale. It is the caudal extension of the pia mater from conus medullaris to the superior part of the coccyx and like denticulate ligaments, phylum terminale also provides the stability 
for the spinal cord. Thank you so much. Thank you.